civil procedure, I want to finish our discussion on notice since we began that last week, but we didn't actually end up finishing talking about notice. We talked about all the procedure stuff prior to notice, and it all built up to this case called Mulain. And I don't know if I really focused on giving an overview of Mulain, but pretty much what happened in Mulain is that there was a trust fund. There were lots of people who were involved in this collective trust fund. And so any dispute that arose under the trust fund or any case that needed to be settled, everyone needed to be notified because, well, they had money in there, so they had an interest in the fund, and everything needed to be taken care of. However, the bank in this case did not have all of the information necessary of the people and they thought that the easiest way to notify everyone would be to send a publication and this was allowed by the statute at the time to be considered sufficient notice well the supreme court in this case said no this is not sufficient notice and there are certain things where we're going to find that there is this constitutional standard of notice so the constitutional standard or really what's the best way to notify somebody is going to vary from case to case depending on the circumstances. But the best way to do it is going to be to deliver the service, which conclu- it, which includes the summons and the complaint, to deliver that in person. And you're going to want to do this through a processor and get a certificate of service. If you can't do that, the next best way is to do it by certified mail. And if you can't do that, well, then you can do it by service of publication. But when you can do it by mail, meaning you have the address, you have the contact information of the person, well, then you should do it by mail. And I'm sorry, there's people in the room next door, so if you can hear all that laughing, I apologize. If you can do it by mail, if you have the address, then you should do it by mail. If not, if you don't have any information, well, then you could in certain circumstances, do it by service of pu- by publication. So that's going to be our order of preference. In person, mail, publication. In Mulane, it was done by publication. This was not sufficient because the bank had adequate information concerning the people there. And so for the most part, they should have sent out this notification by mail because they had current mailing addresses and that concludes really quickly our discussion on notice thank you for listening to this episode of the law schoolers before i let you go there are four things i want to say the first thing is if you enjoyed these episodes and if you enjoyed the website i would invite you to go and join Law Schoolers Pro, and you can do that by going to lawschoolers.com slash join. It's a way for you to support us, but there's also a lot of features there that I think you will enjoy. Second thing is that nearly all of our episodes are unedited. The only ones that aren't are pre-law materials, and the reason for that is so you can actually see the legal material in its raw form as I'm learning it as well. The third thing is that the information contained in these episodes are specifically only for educational purposes. They're not to be used as legal advice. And with that, the fourth thing is, if it is used as legal advice, we are not liable. That is, law schoolers is not liable for any legal outcomes. Thank you again for enjoying the show. Have a good one.